Hey guys, if you're new to my channel, this is not something I would normally post, but I know it is going to help a lot of people that might be going through the same thing like me. So I wanted to post my story of my breakup, even though it's gonna be really hard for me to talk about. And this is not for any malicious reasons. I do not want any harassments going towards the person that I'm talking about who I shall not name, even if you think or you don't think who, you, who they are. Um, this is just purely to help others and for me to get it off my chest. So the day started really great. I surprised my girlfriend with um, breakfast in an amazing place. And then I took her to the market. We went shopping and she found these amazing shorts and she loved them so she bought them. And as we were driving back, she got a text from this guy who I was really unsure about and he invited her to this pool party. So, jokingly, I say, oh, can I go? And her reaction was, no, what? No, you cannot come with me. I wouldn't have fun if you went. And I was like, um, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I have a musical I have to go to tonight, so I, I, I couldn't have gone anyways. And um, that kind of bugged me, though, in my head, because the first person I would invite to a pool party, if I got invited to a pool party, is my girlfriend. You know, I would love to take her. I know she, we'd have so much fun. So it kind of bugged me. And then um, she said, hey, I might need you to pick me up or I might not need you to pick me up, but here's the address. So she gave me the address and I was like, cool, I'll see you at one then. Um, that's when I get out of my musical. So I go to my musical and I have a, an amazing performance. I feel great. I come out and I call my girlfriend, you know, excited to see her. I call her. I call her. No answer. I call her. No answer. So I say, okay, maybe she's asleep at my house. So I text my roommate. And my roommate says, no, no one's here. And so I go, okay, this is strange. So I go, okay, maybe she's at the house, but her phone's not dead, it's ringing. So I drive to this house from the address she gave me, and I call her 20 more times outside the house, hoping she would pick up so I wouldn't walk in and seem like this crazy boyfriend. And she didn't pick up. So I had to walk in. And so this is a pool party, so naturally I figured they're in the back. So I opened the back gate, and I walked in, and what I saw were people I never would associate myself with in my life. Like, that is just not the kind of people I want to surround myself with. That is not who I want to surround myself with. I won't even go into detail. I am trying to find out where my girlfriend is. I'm talking to these people, and they're pretending like they don't know her. They, don't, they never saw her the whole day. Um, telling me all these crazy things and I said no she told me to come pick her up and then they're all looking at each other kind of weird and conspicuously and I'm like what's going on so this other guy walks out and I say hey I'm looking for this girl it's my girlfriend he says oh yeah I've seen her um, you came to get her I said yes and he's like yeah she's in the back house right now I said oh okay so I walk to that back house and I knock on the door just gently no one comes so I bang on the door I'm like really worried at this point and then this guy walks out and, and he opens the door and I say hi I'm Marlon I'm here to get my girlfriend and he says oh uh, okay um, she's back here so he walks me through the through like the living room and then through a bedroom I see my girlfriend's shorts just right next to the bed her shoes untied right next to the bed the same shorts she bought from the marketplace I took her to today. And I'm like, that's interesting. And he takes me to her and she's in the bathroom. And she's in the bathtub and she's throwing up and she's so sick. And so I'm trying to say, hey, let's go. I can take you home. Let's get out of here. And then she starts arguing and fighting with me. I didn't tell you to come, blah, 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 these nasty things. And I'm just trying to be calm. And I'm like, hey, let's go. And then I can see her shivering. She's just in this bathtub shivering so much. And so I'm like, you know what? I, I did a scene in class today. I have some clothes in my car that are mine. I'll, I'll go get them. I'm going to go get my clothes for you to wear. And so as I'm walking out, the guy picks up these shorts that are on the ground and goes, hey, you're probably going to need these. And it took everything inside of me to have so much strength and just say he's not worth it. What's worth it is just to get out of here right now, have her be safe, and 
Yeah. So I go to my car, I put the shorts in my car, and I get the clothes. I bring them to her and she's fighting with me, she won't put them on, she's too cold, she can't move. And so I sit there. One hour passes, two hour passes, three hours pass, five hours pass. I sit there by her side, and she's just there, sick. And eventually she gets back to being herself. And she puts on the clothes, and we leave. And by this time, so it's six in the morning at this time, and we're in my car. And in my head, I thought about how she reacted when I asked her if I could go to the pool party. And from that, I realized I was dealing with a person that had no integrity and no honor, and I should have known from that moment, but I learned. And from that moment, I decided that I would never, never ever associate myself with someone that had no integrity or honor like that. So we get home, we go to sleep, and the next morning, I knew everything was over. There's nothing to talk about. I mean, what else is there to talk about? So we broke up. I broke up with her. There's a famous quote by Maya Angelou that says, if someone shows you themselves, believe them the first time. And what I learned was someone had shown themselves to me and I had to believe them. The old Marlon, the insecure, less confident Marlon last year would have completely not believed them, would have thought that I could have fixed everything, would have thought that everything would have been okay if I would have stayed with her and she would have done the same thing to me again. The new me knows that oh, this is unforgivable and I cannot, there is no coming back from this. And so the point of me sharing this story with you guys is you might be going through a heartbreak. It might not be an identical situation. It might be completely opposite, but it is hard. And I want you guys to know it's okay to talk about it. You know, a lot of people think it's not okay to talk about your feelings, express your feelings. Well, this is what I signed up for when I made a YouTube account. I wanted an audience. I have an audience. And now I'm going to talk to my audience about how I feel and what's going on in my life right now. And what's going on in my life right now is, yes, I am broken. My heart is broken. But I have a lot to do. I just closed that last musical I was in. But right now I'm going straight into a Shakespeare production. I'm making a video a day for you guys. I'm working out every single day, rock climbing, working on my voice. I have a lot of things to accomplish here. I can honestly can say that I am so thankful because you guys saved me. YouTube has saved me. If I didn't have you guys to support me and to let me have my outlet, I don't know what I would do in a situation like this. But because of YouTube, I can create and be an artist double, triple times my potential. And I can keep going and creating more and more. I just want to say thank you for that and thank you for lending me your ears to listen to me. My roommate Roy, he gave me this quote that he heard from someone which stated, never waste your pain. And that is exactly what I'm going to do with this. I didn't want to waste it, I wanted to share it. I wanted to create with it. I wanted to, it to make me more powerful. As all this was happening, that night all I could see in my head was me in some sort of film. And this was all happening to me like it was a movie. And so I'm going to start a GoFundMe. And you can donate to me if you like, if you don't like. You don't have to, I'm not pressuring you to. But what this GoFundMe is going to be for is so you can donate to my short film that I'm going to make about this whole breakup. You know, a short film just showing you guys how I felt coming to that pool party. What I was thinking, everything, all my emotions, thoughts and everything. It's going to be very low budget. The donations are just going to pay for equipment rentals, crew fees, actors, and location. I want to be able to show you guys that it is okay to take all this pain and mold it and wield it and shape it into something powerful. That's how I want to express it. So if you want to, the link's in the description below. Go ahead and go to my GoFundMe. You don't have to, but I would love it if you supported me and was a part of this journey with me. So thank you guys for listening to me pour my heart out of one of the worst days of my life so far. And I am only 22, I'm so young. This is probably going to be maybe like this big in my memoir. But I want to be able to create it and, and feel everything deeply right now. And as always, there's going to be another new video tomorrow that's a lot different than this. At 12 p.m. Every single day, I'm here for you just like you were here for me. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. 
Good morning, everybody. What? I just got back from a workout, and I know this is a lot different. I never got cream barbecue in the morning before, but it's not the morning. It's the afternoon. And uh, well, guess who's back? Miguel. No. His girl. His brother. underneath this um, Korean barbecue table for like three weeks. Oh my gosh, yeah, I can't believe I finally found Roy. He was <laughs> under here the whole time.